everyone thank you for tuning back into my channel limitless living this is part of the series limitless heel talk and I'm here to talk about as you can see below uh, not all families are perfect last week I went ahead and I spoke to you guys about all the good things about my family and all the positive things that went on and the great memories that I had uh, growing up so today I wanted to kind of let you into all of the spaces how you know many families want to appear perfect and they want to appear you know that nothing's wrong and everything's beautiful and everything and it's not always that way so this is part of me saying that I don't want to stay quiet anymore and many people know my story but I want to get out there to be able to help you guys in case you have a hidden story that is affecting you a hidden story that's keeping you down I want to help empower you guys and I want to help lift you guys because you guys have a voice and I want you to know that you have a voice and you need to stand up for yourself and you need to get out there and you need to just voice what happened to you because this wasn't your fault and this is what I'm trying to encourage you guys to do I'm gonna go ahead and tell you my story to see if maybe you relate to me again maybe you don't relate to me or maybe it'll kind of implant a thought that maybe you know you just want to speak up because you have so much pain inside so this is gonna be my most vulnerable video it's a little difficult to talk about I may get emotional I may not let's see how it goes so if you hear a little bit of background noise that's my son he's playing in the background so when I was little my mom had me when she was older she was 38 years old when she had me and my siblings were all 10 years apart so I was very lonely growing up and my parents tried to keep me very safe and I wasn't allowed to play outside or have many friends and I was very protected. What's funny is that my abuse came from inside the household and it's not funny, it's just ironic because they tried to keep me so safe. And I'm not ready to reveal who my abuser is just yet but I will at some point during my Heel Talk series. and. I was eight years old when it all started and this person is a lot older than I am very cognitive his mind is all there it was a male and after school he would take care of me and he would do horrible things to me so my point is not to get into the horrible details it's to get into what those horrible things did to me growing up so basically as an eight-year-old that's getting into maturity getting into puberty getting into all of these things i felt so confused that this person just ripped my innocence from me i, w I was confused growing up and and i i hated myself i felt dirty i felt unwanted i felt misunderstood I had a very confused stage when I, I'm, I'm thinking about my childhood and then in elementary I felt like my mind was always on a cloud and it's funny because my dad always used to tell me get your mind out of the clouds get your mind out of the clouds and I was like what is he talking about because obviously at this age I didn't know what was going on it came to a point where you know fast forwarding to today that I can look back at my childhood I'm like wow this was all this was all trauma you know and trauma changes your brain completely as I started therapy as I started understanding what was wrong with me not wrong with me because I'm perfectly fine this happened to me and that's okay and I was blessed with this because I can sit here and help you guys speak up and help you guys understand yourself and that's what I'm so passionate about and that's what I was blessed with and that's what I want you guys to understand what I'm doing here and this is not for me to go and tell my story and and it's not about me this is about you guys and I want to help people because it took me so many years to speak up and I want to help people liberate themselves and I want to help you guys liberate yourselves because this has been a long journey and I can only, I can't, I can't even explain to you how much my life has shifted ever since I've been liberated to say my story out loud and not feel afraid and not say oh I can't tell this person I can tell that person or I can't go out in public and talk about it no I can talk about it because it's my story it happened to me and this is not my fault this is not my fault this is not your fault so you are entitled to go out there and tell your story it doesn't matter who it was stop being afraid because you have yourself 
And if you're spiritual, whoever you believe in has you. So you got this, okay? I want you to know, you have this. So get out there and speak because you will feel the most liberated you have in your entire life. And you're not holding in all those stones and those little black boxes and those little, just all these things that hold you down. You won't have that anymore. I promise you. And it's scary because you don't want to tap into those memories. And you, you think the more I tap into those memories, the worse I'm going to get. I promise you, it's very stormy for a little bit. And then after that, it's so clear that you, you would never imagined in your life that you would get there. Ever. I promise you that. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard to face those facts. And I know it's hard to sit there and say, you know what? I'm going to sit here and I'm going to face my past and I'm going to you know try to remember everything that happened to me and it's rough it's really rough but i promise you that that little patch of ugly is just so worth the beauty that comes afterwards and that's my message to you guys i'm gonna go back to my childhood so with that abuse one i was very lonely my mom was always home she was a stay-at-home mom but she was very absent and because she was depressed so then I had my dad who was upset and then my sister was out doing her thing and then it was just I, I didn't have anyone you know so after school I believe I was in fifth grade if I'm not if I'm not mistaken I was being taken care of by this individual and being taken care of by this individual all of these things were occurring to me in elementary school so I started getting, you know, like your little boyfriend when you're in elementary school and you're maturing and you're going through your puberty process and all these things are happening to you so rapidly and but my whole life I have felt like I've been in slow motion. I, I, you could talk to me and it'll take me a few seconds to be like, what? Like you were talking to me? Because I feel, Oh, I felt, I don't feel that way anymore, but that whole time I felt that I was so out of connection with people, like I felt isolated. And I kept isolating myself because I felt so different. And I felt, yeah, basically isolated. Like I was in like in this little bubble and everyone else was just fine, you know? But my whole life it's been, it, I felt like I've been drowning and like when I look up at the ceiling of a bedroom, it's like if I'm underwater and the ceiling is the surface of the water and I look up and I, I can't, I'm trying to swim and swim and swim so I can catch a breath of air and I can't. So that's been my visual, I'm an extremely visual person, so that's my visual to how my depression's been my whole life and that's because of my trauma and my whole life I thought I was just different. I thought that the world was gloomy, I thought that everyone was out to get me, I thought everyone hated me, I thought, you know, nobody wanted to hear from me, that my voice wasn't important, that I wasn't funny, that I wasn't beautiful, that I wasn't um, liked, that I wasn't anything. So I put myself in such a small box that I would start like putting myself in a corner and when people would invite me places, I wouldn't go and people would you know let's go hang out and then in my head I'm like oh they just inviting me to make fun of me and all these thoughts would just overwhelm me and it was it's crazy when I think about it because when I think of other people feeling this way about themselves because of abuse and something that happened to them that wasn't their fault it, it hurts and to, it's such a deep level because these people are beautiful you guys are beautiful you guys are amazing you guys are the strongest souls I know so basically growing up in my family you always hear you know don't speak up about anything and everybody just makes you so fearful and that's what i want to tell you guys it's not scary what's scary is not speaking up you know it's it's scary to let these people get away with these things and and let it happen to other people it's not the right thing it's just it disgusts me to let these people go on and continue these things and and for these people that that They're doing these crimes and they're committing sexual abuse and all these things have mental illnesses that need to be treated is my point. It's not that I'm sitting here and and you know completely writing them off and and wishing the worst on them because I don't feel that way either. I just feel that they need to be be treated. Be treated because that's, that's this is an issue that nobody's seeing. They throw them in jail and that's it. 
or they throw them here and that's it. No, they need to be treated because then they release them and then guess what? They're back to doing exactly what they were doing in the first place. So there's, it's not making any sense to me. Uh, going back to, let's see, childhood. Then I went into my teenage years. So remember, I went through the abuse from 8 to about 16. So at some point, I let my mother know about the abuse. I was 14. At that point, you know, after a few months, she asked me to forgive my abuser. The abuse created people-pleasing behavior. I didn't know that till now. And I did it to please her. I did it to please my abuser. And I said, you know what? It's fine. I, I forgave my abuser after I wrote a really nasty letter getting everything I had inside out. I got it out. I said everything I had to say and I said, I forgive you. For me, I thought forgiveness meant, okay, I forgive you, we're cool now. That's what I thought. But now I know that forgiveness means, you know, I can forgive you, but it doesn't mean I need to deal with you. So now I understand what that means because to like now, presently, I forgive that person, but I'm never dealing with that person again. When I was 14, I went ahead, I forgave that person, and the abuse continued. And the worst incident happened when I was 16. That's probably the one that has me still kind of traumatized till today. There's times where I get worse, there's times where I'm okay, there's times you know certain triggers that make me feel a certain way that I it's very hard for me to deal with um, by that time I started dating a, I had a boyfriend I had a stable boyfriend so then I found happiness in that relationship I found stability I found what I needed in that relationship and we were together for I want to say like three four years or something like that and then at that point I decided to seek help because we broke up and I decided to date an older guy. He was like 10 years older than me. And that relationship started to scare me a little bit. It was just, it was scary. It just started getting scary. Um, Cause he told me a story that had happened with his ex-wife and it was, I started getting intimidated by men. But at, with the previous relationship, I was strong. I was making my own decisions. I was, you know, the, the girl that my dad brought me up to be was this courageous girl, like he, always boosted me to be this independent woman. At this point, I'm about 19 years old, 19, 20, and, it's, and I decide to seek help. And actually, that therapist recommended this book, which I really wanted to highly recommend to you guys. It's called The Courage to Heal, and it's a guide for women survivors of child sexual abuse. I don't know if they have a version for men. I'm not absolutely sure, but I highly, highly recommend this book. In the beginning, maybe the first half, you will probably be heartbroken. I'm just being real with you. You're going to be facing a lot of rough, rough memories. And they have activities for you to do. For example, one of them was to draw a map of the place where you were abused. Or your childhood home, depending on where you were. And when I drew that place, I remembered a lot more things. And that night, I had a panic attack. I thought I was... I couldn't breathe, I couldn't, and I thank God today for my boyfriend because he was there for me. And he's really understanding and he's had a lot of patience and a lot of support and a lot of, it's been rough. It's, we've actually, we just had our anniversary, our one year anniversary, and I couldn't be any more thankful to have the partner that I have today because it's been very rough. I'll leave a note under my video about this book so you guys can go out and get it. It's amazing. It's very, it hurts, but after you get through the pain, it's healing. It truly is. And um, you're always going to get worse before you get better when you're facing your issues. I want to let you know that. That's something I learned because I was like, why is therapy making me worse? This doesn't make sense. I'm supposed to be better. But after I faced the anger, after I faced the rage, after I faced everything, the guilt, the that dirty feeling that after I faced all that and then I started feeling the peace I'd go through it again that's on the sexual abuse I have PTSD <laughs> anxiety depression on the next episode next week I want to get into those feelings and what that feels like I want to tap deep and deep 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 into those feelings to see if you guys relate to me um, I want you guys to understand what that really feels like there's many people out there that don't get it they're like get over it get this get that 
you know, you're fine, you're just being dramatic, you just want attention, you just want this, you just want that. And it's so frustrating for the person that suffers from these things that I'm just here to connect with you guys. You know, I want you guys to feel that someone understands, even if it's through YouTube, even if it's through a simple email, reach out to me. Uh, like my video subscribe to my channel whatever you need to do to reach out to me And if you feel that you need to talk to me about something I'm all ears or all eyes if I'm reading an email I just want to show you guys that there is light after all this darkness. I promise you I know that you don't see it at first, but I promise you that there's light after all the darkness that's basically it. Um, I hope you guys tune in next week. On my Facebook and Instagram, I'm going to start posting more motivational things. If you guys want to check that out, that would be cool. I'll leave all the information under my video so you guys can tune in to Instagram, Facebook. I have everything pretty much linked, so I'll be checking everything. If you guys want to talk to me, let me know. Email's my best bet because of my two kiddos. So here we are. This was my roughest video and we got through it. So, you can always get through everything. This was the hard part. I hope you guys got an understanding for what I went through, and I hope you guys can relate, or at least it plants a little seed of hope for you guys. So, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you next week. Thank you. you are